This episode of Super GG Radio is brought to you by our Patreon. Patrons of the show can get our Dogs of Super GG Radio newsletter, Super GG Radio stickers, a slap on your closest PC or bag, input on what we cover, game nights with the hosts, and even a chance to win a copy of an indie we talked about. Not only that, but 90% of all patron contributions go to the Children's Miracle Network of Hospitals. Visit patreon.com slash superggradio to learn more. What's good, Internet, and welcome to session 255 of Super GG Radio, where friends chat about video games and all things adjacent. And, uh, yeah, this week we're finally uh, kicking Joel out of the podcast. We, we just did. It's official. We literally kicked him out. So no Joel. Don't look for him. We've nope. scrubbed him from the entire episode. I even wrote all of his spots here. It does not Joel or Joel go away. Uh, and then... We're, you know, we're, we're going to embrace some anime. I forgot that that was a thing I did the last couple of years, so oh, I'm your yeah. host and beater of the podcast, Eric Getty Gettinger. With me, as always, is Gail Gun Online Survivor, Alex Arona. Do you mean, is, wait, Gail Gun or Gun Gal? Because I, I, I'm amazing at both. We Gun also Gal. welcome... <laughs> Getty, I'm not, I'm not engaging. You, you, I'm not you engaging. Cannot put this podcast on the beat list. I am it. not <laughs> engaging. Uh, all right. We also invite man who invite. <laughs> Jeez, Alex. I, I I need to just go home. I'm done. Yeah, with I was going to say, what are you doing? This you you wrote this. Yeah, but then I got really distracted by how just awful you s- slid <laughs> gal gun in there. <clears throat> all right. Man who invented full-dive haptics, Alec Parks. The key was to get the sensors nice and moist. Uh-oh. Moist. That was so that it, like, sentence. picks up and you can feel it in your body, right? Absolutely. The moisture... You guys ever, you guys ever do D-Box? Like, theater? Like, seats? Uh, no. no. What is that? Explain it. That's where the, the, the seats... Will move around with the action. Ooh. Oh yeah! And I've you'll done get that. like smells and like speakers. It, it's it's distracting. It's it's actively distracting. It's, I did it at the World of Coke. They uh, had called it 4D. Yeah. But did during they... like a film, it's like even like some of the sense. Oh, oh, this is a sensitive moment, and your thing's still kind of shaking a little bit. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> well, I, I am feeling disconnected from this scene. Did they just spray Coke at you? Oh, yes. They, oh, they did? I can only yeah. imagine. It'll clean your driveway. <laughs> It'll melt the skin off of anything if you leave it in there long enough. Jeez. It's like being it was a, a sticky experience. <laughs> like how oh. Alec, Alec has dropped sticky and moist. <laughs> well, no, I said it was a real squelchy sentence earlier. Oh, don't worry. We're going to use the word squelch at least four or five times. <laughs> Uh, this episode that game was Jeez. real squelchy. Ew. Oh gosh. Oh, it was so. We are going to get real gross. Um, yep. Uh, so Alex, if you don't like the openings, go ahead and write your own. Okay. And then I'll delete it and I'll write my own. So <laughs> <laughs> lesson not learned for any of us. This week, we are going to get puzzled in early adopters. Do a news stuff those are air quotes for you not watching and a lot of news listening who listens to podcasts then our podcasts are secret podcasts <laughs> then alex finally opens final fantasy 7 in the backlog i am excited i heard that it was a whole <laughs> ceremony he did a youtube video it's a, called an unboxing you guys know about these things i've heard rumors that they exist an unboxing what is where is he <laughs> i don't know what he's doing are you yeah, there it is see he's got his copy of final fantasy Se- i oh, even it's... flipped i even flipped the cover like i always do with all of games that have reversible covers. he flipped the cover and has not even played it nope i open it i flip the cover if it's got reversible it's two discs getty i know the like last I... one was too you know i forgot that did you mm-hmm 
you should, uh, man, you should maybe get some fish oil. <laughs> it helps with memory. Oh. Yeah. yeah, need those omega threes, dude. Oh, you know what? I should. Yeah. Well, don't worry. I'll get you a nice fish this weekend while we're oh. rocking it out at Asin for. For those of you not in the Chicago land area or not hip into the anime scene. Anyway, we got a podcast this week. We're gonna yeah, do we're stuff. We're not hip into the anime scene. I I know, but <laughs> I'm trying. Maybe we'll just uh, if people stick around for after the episode, you can unbox the. The collector's edition that you somehow procured for me. I'm sure that people want to see what that pillow looks like. I already told you we're not getting banned on Twitch. Well, we can <laughs> certainly try. All right. <clears throat> I'm going to move on to early adopters, where we play alphas, betas, and games that have me walking around in circles. I don't know about you guys, but this week we got two walking simulators. Can I call them that? I d- yes, I definitely picked some. Some did you pick? I, I picked these. Or you picked these. I have no idea, but they are puzzle game walking simulators. So we will start with lens gloss. Lens gloss. Um, Alec, known person on the podcast, has played the games. <laughs> I want he to sure hear is a person that's here. <laughs> He's. I don't get to pick on him very often, so I'm going to pick on him tonight. Let's hear about Lens Gloss. So this is a first-person uh, puzzler, as you pointed out. You wander through a ter- a uh, area that has cameras set up projecting onto walls, and you can change the film in there to go to different areas and walk through the lit-up wall. You are solving puzzles to unlock codes, to get more film. Uh, there are different types of film. I only came across the blue film and the yellow film. Mm-hmm. That's all there was. So Okay. You at least got that far. No, there was an orange. Several oranges. Uh, that's what I meant. Not, not yellow, orange. Mm. I, I swear it was yellow and it was blue. There's the only two that I encountered in the demo that I played. And I made it to the door. When I opened it, it said, thanks for playing. I did not make it to the door. I I did not make it that far either. (laughs) Oh. I got stuck looking for uh, the vision center in the brain. Mm. I did not get stuck at all. I just said, you know what? I'm going to get this game. (laughs) What? The decision was made. So, as Alec accurately described, it is more or less just walking around from room to room solving puzzles so that you can find more items in order to progress further into this... um, Brainscape? I I guess it's his inner thoughts. uh, When I read the Steam page, it implies that you are going between different times, and it didn't really occur to me that that was something that was happening until I got to the second area and I ran into a table and on the table there was um, you know plates cups that were set out and then a couple of more items that I eventually had to go and pick up but uh, you can then go through one of the projector like the projected images and these are old school projectors too like film real so it has a certain aesthetic to it but you throw up one of the blue pieces of film, lets you go through, and then like go around, and then throw a yellow in there, and then that whole room changed to something different. And it was like, hey, now go find all of the plates that belong on the table. So then I'm running around, trying to find every single item that I can, and then um, eventually it, it leads you to a, a couple of other tricky puzzles, but... The first area in this, I want to really commend Lens Gloss. It was not difficult. It was just a series of having to backtrack. It was looking for clues. And it was the tutorialization of the little, like, brain that you can pick up. And it's like, hey, you just had a thought. Or you just had a new idea. I love that. That was really cool. 
I think that, and then and then the UI is very easily like yes. when you when you open up the pause screen, it just gives you all of your thoughts. Yeah, which is like all great for puzzle solving, including like, oh, you found this code. Yes, yeah, so, so oh, the, the things that you remember. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's just nice because it's like I don't have to sift. Like you know, a lot of times they'll bring up a journal and you got to sift through pages. It's like no, here's everything laid out in front of you. Boom, ready to go. Yeah. So it, there's a lot of things that I think that lens gloss is doing really great to start out with. I love the way that it looks. It has kind of a, a filmy, like grainy quality to it. It's not super graphically intense. So I didn't feel <laughs> compared to the other game that we played, I didn't feel like uh, it was taking too much uh, space or it wasn't, it just wasn't as uh, heavy on the computer. But at the same time, it looked nice. I was able to solve the puzzles. I felt like, like Alex said, it had all of these helpful things that led me to not have to like write down codes in a, in a piece of paper and then look it up later. It was very, very upfront about it. One, one critique that I have is that I felt like I wasn't getting enough of the story in the demo. I feel like there was probably more backstory or more that could be told outside of, of course, the Steam page that uh, exists. What do you guys, what do you guys think? I know Alex already said that he's got it oh, on the yeah. wish list. I, I'm a, I'm a sucker for some of these. Yeah. Uh, the one thing I did want to say is that once you put a film into a projector, you could take it back out again. Yeah. Mainly because some rooms have two projectors. You put it into one projector. It projects one room. If you take it out and put it in a second projector, it's a whole different room. Mm-hmm. It's just wild how that works. Yeah. So when it comes down to these like very curious puzzle kind of style games, I'm like all for it. Oh yeah. Give me a give me a set of items and try to shove them into different things until something works. Awesome. <laughs> I'm on board. <laughs> yeah, yes. my big problem was with the backtracking. It, it got, I got lost with which combinations had I actually tried in which rooms. I was just like, okay, this is good. But I'm lost. <laughs> there was there was one room that was meant to be tricky. Like you put that yellow film in there and then it's diverging paths and there's signposts and I didn't I really didn't pay attention to see if the signposts were very helpful. I just did the I just did the labyrinth follow the left wall until I found what yeah. I was looking for. I was like That's the way to get out of every maze. That's sometimes that's what you gotta do, man. Mm-hmm. No shame in that. So this is a wish list for me, bud. Yeah, I'm right there with you. I feel like I could get lost in lens gloss again. Get not lost too... in the lens gloss sauce. Ugh. <laughs> Why sauce? You get lost in the sauce, baby. Uh, Alec, do you have anything to add? <laughs> <laughs> to get us away from that. Before I don't. I did enjoy the music to it, too. It was kind of mm-hmm. mellow. Yeah. Okay. Speaking of sauce, (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to move us over to the other game. Um, And we played Necro. Hmm? What's it called? Necrophosis. That sounds right. Sounds right to me. If you guys want to pronounce it differently, Necrophosis. God bless you. this uh, This is where the squelching comes in. This yeah, game, this, was a, this is a gross one. Has such a look, such an aesthetic, <clears throat> and the sound design it complements the grotesque nature of the things that you encounter in Necrophosis. There was a game like this that came out last year. Scorn, called Scorn, yes. Scorn. But I never played Scorn. I I know what you're talking about. I felt like it was uh, Scorn. This is this is definitely okay, so. The idea for this is also very similar to uh, Lens Gloss in that it is a first-person puzzle game, mm-hmm. and you get items in an inventory that, when combined with other things in the environment, will unlock the next steps in the puzzle. Okay. First person as well. But in this case, you're in the afterlife, and everything is just made out of flesh and bones. Like, everything you encounter. It's like, oh, hit this light switch, and it's like, ew, this just... This is like three feet. Everything is wet. <laughs> Why yeah. is everything wet? What Got a the nice f- little sheen. And, and the sound design is just, it's like really well done uh-huh. in the way that everything just like, 
Oh, it feels gross. Just say, to... say it. First thing you do. What's the first uh, thing you do? You got to collect what? Oh, you got to collect eyeballs. Eyeballs. And, not... and you have and to it remove. Just, like, put it in your inventory. It's like no, you have to rip it and disconnect it. Uh huh. Like, oh, is this an optical nerve? nerve? By yeah. just holding an eyeball, walking around like, oh, where do I put this? Oh, and, like, there's, there's a face. one puzzle that's just like, you found three brains with three satanic symbols. Put them in the right corpse body. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, this is... And that, that unlocks the gate, which turns out those three corpse bodies were part of a of a, of a weird corpse... Spider beetle. thing? Beetle, yeah. That just gets up and walks away once you've put the brains in the right order. Now let's talk about brains, Ew. though. Oh, uh, my favorite part was when you f- put the thing in the uh, the bones up to the l- cannon, mm-hmm. and you got to pull your brain out and put it <laughs> in. I don't think that's your brain. I think because I found three brains. Oh no, that's your brain. Is yeah. it yours? You t- you take control of it. I that's that what it is. The brains I found. You found was, three brains, but you also had yours. Of, it was a bunch. It was a bunch of brains in this game. And a, a bunch of eyeballs. Bra- it's very brain, like brain focused, like very brain centric. Well, yeah, because you need the brain in order to move. Yeah, and if you don't can't move, you're just a dead husk. You are sure, sure, sure. Putting sure, your sure, brain sure, into sure, sure. that device, and uh, as you get towards the end, there's another device that you put your brain in. But once you put it in, then you're able to control it. Otherwise, the uh, the hus- husk is a great word to use. It just exists there, and you can't remove it. You just have to, you can see your character, he's just standing there with his hand on the brain, on the brain. as it moves around. Ugh. And as you move it, he kind of like puppeteers the brain. Uh-huh. Ugh. And there's a, and that's, that whole, even that, like the cannon is a, is like a, is a, is a reference to, uh, was it H.R. Geiger? Because that was like the, an alien like when those alien movies, the they Prometheus come the, film, like, the, was that what it was? The, the pregenitor, like race that created the alien, and uh, it's a guy sitting like in a cannon pilot, oh, like piece like that. Yeah. So I this think he was called the jockey. The jockey sounds right. Those <laughs> movies. Either way. This uh, this game is uh, it's got a lot of stuff going on for it i i can't get over just the way that everything looks it's gross it's disgusting but it works do you guys find any of the other interactables in that first area the little beetle that when you turn it over it just has a face in it and it's shouting at you no did you find the other one which was just like I don't even know. It kind of looked like a, a swaddled baby on the ground. And then it was like, that. do you want to pull on it? And then the head comes out and then it doesn't say a thing. It just like yells at you. <laughs> Everything's yelling at you, man. It is. And then you encounter these. I, I, I guess they're a combination of gods or deities that exist in the afterlife. And they're telling you um, a That's story uh, through... Uh, poems yeah that I like a good was poem. a little hard for me i like a good poem i like a good poem but i was just like okay i don't know what parts are important what do i need to actually know would it be better if it were slam poetry i no. don't know i don't <laughs> no. think it would i think this fits no. the the tone and everything it, but would that be would would, it, would slam poetry also fit the tone no. Stop trying to make slam poetry happen. Yeah, Alex. nobody wants your slam poetry, Alex. Come on. Slam. Alex, you're embarrassing all of us with your slam poetry. I'm not enabling you tonight. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah. But I think that's a that's a good point, Alec. I don't know uh, because when you walk up the stairs after you solve the initial puzzle, you have like this uh exposition. And I wasn't sure if I should be paying attention to it or if there was something more important to it that I missed. And I felt yeah. like there were a couple of puzzles that I solved that I don't know if they needed to be solved or if there was even an outcome from them. 
Right, like finding the uh, coins mm -hmm. for the altar right. and the uh, sightless prophet. Yes. Yeah, I couldn't figure out what to do with the coins, but I, I stopped at a certain point because I was also like, man, I'm probably going to get this game, so I'm probably going to put it on my uh, wish list okay. and walk away. No, you put the coins down and then like <coughs> uh, something lights up in the distance. Oh, okay. And I was like, did did I need to do that? Is that important? So Should I aim the cannon at it? I definitely did that. At one I point, I was just like bunch stuff. going around. I was like, zap, zap, zap. <laughs> <laughs> Completely unnecessary. Completely worth it. Yeah. So, uh, Alex, how far did you call it at? Uh, after the weird uh, corpse, uh, the beetle made of corpses. Okay. There's a sentence for you. <laughs> Wasn't too much after that, but you do get to control another giant. Well, this time it's a giant like Colossus. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. I didn't. I only found two brains, so I was just like, well, a this... flesh mech. Would you say? Would you call it a flesh mech? I would mm, flesh and bone mech, but yeah, let's call it a flesh mech. I'm into it. I watched enough Evangelion to know where this goes. I hope not. I don't want to go there. Hey, it's your why mother. Not? Why not? Get in the robots, Shinji. I'm so messed up, Getty. Get, get in the. Kill your friend. Kill your friend now. I didn't know it was get my friend. In the robot, or we're getting someone else. Ugh. Now I need to shower. <laughs> you play. You played necro. What was it? Necrophosis. You played Necrophosis, Getty. Of course you need to shower. You can't make me. <laughs> I mean, you'll fit right in at Asen if you don't. Oh, 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 oh. that was just... I don't know. It's You're brutal. trying to make some enemies here, huh? I know, right? <laughs> Secret podcast. Hey, I know, I know some of those people. Secret podcast. You're offending the weebs. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Let's uh, check Kitty's out. about to get canceled. <laughs> no, we established Joel's gone that for thirty seconds and calls everybody a bunch of weebs. We are, we established that that is not a derogatory term. Did we? <laughs> yes. Googling. Yeah, fine. <laughs> you can go ahead and Google away. I was going to take us into the break, but let's let Alex Google. <laughs> uh, well, uh, well, what's no, the internet you're say? Good. You're good. You're good. Yeah, I know I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> I, I try and filter myself all right friggin weebs hey guys <laughs> <laughs> oh can we call get this get us out the... of here getty quick <laughs> all right let's take a look at this creepy statue and it opens right into a break let's go <laughs> back this is the news with super gg radio now with 50 percent more games released oh that's like the main thing that we have in the news this week is Wacky a whole playable tube man yeah whole bunch of games hit 1.0 but you really ready? i didn't talk about the biggest game of the news year the, the biggest news of the year okay and that well is hold hold on hold on let me do my 1.0s can I do my 1.0s? Can I just talk about this game? I can I do my 1.0s? It's called Grandpa High on Metro. On Retro. <laughs> Grandpa High on Retro sounds amazing. All right, go ahead. But what well, you could bring that up anywhere. <laughs> but you decided to bring it up in the news. But why? Yes, it's a Today, Alex sent over a video called of, of a game that it, it's coming in on Thanksgiving. I think it said, "Is yes, that is right. that what it was?" Grandpa High on Retro, and it just looks like craziness. I don't, I don't know. I just want to make that very clear. How how do we describe it? Like it's a PS third one, person PS1, shooter, P but it's a PS one boomer shooter. No third person. 
Third it's, person, a Max Payne nah, style. No, this looks, it looked more like GTA to me than a boomer shooter. No, no, that's, I, I corrected myself. It's more of a Max Payne style shooter. Okay. But it's definitely not a Silk Song, right? No. <laughs> whatever that is. Yeah, well, whatever that is. All right. Baladins goes 1.0. We played that here on the podcast. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. It was good. <laughs> Last week we jumped the gun on this, but Capybara, the story of Sisyphus, goes 1.0. Remember when Alex is like, it's free right now. Well, it's free now. It was not free <laughs> last week. It's on the freebie list. Though. It is on the freebie list. As is Screenplay, the free-to-play movie-themed collectible card game. Let me just tell you, before you type in Screenplay and look for a free game... Make sure that you select screenplay TCG trading card game because there are CCG. multiple. There are multiple. Nope. Yeah, C- it's CCG. CTG. No, C C. Charlie Charlie. Gamma. Thank you. I I, I forgot my. I was missing my. No trading. Your phonetic military. alphabet. Just collectible card yeah, military game. Military alphabet. Yeah. Make sure that you select the correct one and not any of the other games called screenplay. Which are also free, Alex. Yep. <laughs> well, I actually I pull up all the games for freebies and different tabs, and I had the wrong screenplay. So thank you. That's good. We're helping each other. All right. Helping each other. Be disappointed. All right. <laughs> Tomb Raider Amazon live action TV series coming from Fe- Phoebe. Phoebe Waller Bridges. All right. Are you not familiar with her? She's I am good. not. I'm sure that if you tell me her work, then I will know. I just. Uh, Fleabag is the big one. Lisa uh, loves she... Fleabag. It's a, it was a, it's a, uh, first season hated it. Second season and third season some of my favorite seasons of television. All right. Um, but I will say that uh, she was also the like the gr- grand niece of in the new Indiana Jones movie. I did not watch it. Yes, but you're aware of it. I know there. who Indiana Jones is, and I know that um, other host of the podcast, Joel DeWitt, does like to fight senior citizens. <laughs> <laughs> I don't what do you, know how to you feel say? about that one. That was. <laughs> what are you going to say? <laughs> hey, <Alex>. Alex. <laughs> Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. I saw your face. You were like, eh, how do I do I defend him? Do I let it... per, per Joel in the chat, it's the only way it's a fair fight. It's not... Joel's in the chat. He is in the chat. He is in the chat. Thank trying you, to fight Harrison Ford this week. But Harrison Anyways, Ford won't Phoebe reply Waller to Bridges any of his tweets. Good work. Uh she helped Donald Glover write uh the Mr. and Mr. Mr. and Mrs. Smith TV uh TV show reboot. Okay. Uh, uh, she ended up leaving the project, but she was supposed to be the other cast with Donald Glover. Mm. So she does good writing work. She's had a couple other projects uh, in the hopper, and this is the new one. And so that'd be very exciting. Okay. I do like me I some Tomb Raider. I don't, I don't think that she is a Laura Croft, but I don't. I, but there's no word that it's going to be her. She's actually a very good writer in, in getting projects done. Okay. Yeah. No, like I said, like me some Tomb Raider. I wish that those are the one movie that they had put out had been um, a better reboot like the reboots that they made to Tomb Raider. Those are, I don't know if any of you guys played them. I know I, I think Alex might have played a little bit of one. Oh, no, I beat the first one. You beat the first I, one? I wanna, I'm still, like, they're still on my backlog. Like, I, I like those games. I don't know if I like the movie reboots. No, no. Yeah, I, that's what I was saying. Them. But I didn't like Angelina Jolie in the first two, so and, I'm, it, and I I feel like I'm an outlier in that. But I I'm okay with it. I don't I don't love Angelina Jolie. I, <laughs> I was that was like that was my thing. Like I was like I was I was like I don't get it. No, nothing that, that she's done has been like super like awesome to me. A, I'm like eh. an acquired taste, but I agree. I I also didn't like the, the representation of the, the worst part of Wanted. <laughs> <laughs> but you loved Wanted. I I like James McAvoy. That's a handsome man. 
And you love curving bullets. Yeah. It's your I mean, second favorite Sam thing Jackson to do. Need to be in that movie. Um, <clears throat> well, I thought it was Morgan Freeman in that movie. Oh, you know what? You're right. It was Morgan Freeman. He also man, you gotta get on those Omega Threes. Yeah. <laughs> I get you some fish oil. Help yeah. you with the uh, remembrance of stuff. All right, moving right along. Uh, this is not the only Dead by Daylight news that I saw this week, but we are reporting on Castlevania coming to Dead by Daylight. Yeah, this is just I I don't I've I've played very little of Dead by Daylight. Uh huh. But I just I love when crossovers like when when a company can cross over like a thousand different things and just make this giant amalgamation of stuff. It feels fun to me. Mm hmm. I was always somebody that like would have all the action figures. So like my Ninja Turtles were fighting a Batman and Wolverine at the same time. And that was super fun to me. But I was always like, this is never going to happen like in anywhere. It did. Almost. Both of those comics exist. Not all of them fighting at once, Kenny. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you got to pick either Batman or. But that's what I'm saying is I don't got to pick with Dead by Daylight. <laughs> I ain't got to pick with Fortnite. I don't play Fortnite, but still, it's so cool. One of these days you'll play. Yep, yeah, I'm sure. I play. I, ha I have played for. I ha I've played a Fortnite. <laughs> um, the other piece of news for Dead by Daylight, Alec. Did you see Dungeons no. and Dragons? Ooh, what? very That's cool. Vecna hunting down a bunch of adventurers. That's my, would that get you guys to play? Uh, Dead oh, by absolutely Daylight not. Me? Nope. But you could play as a bard. So, you guys oh. <laughs> how much is Dead by Daylight? I uh, I do not know list. any of the if they're gonna be part of the base. Like you have to, you know, download this extra, or if it'll be a separate um, Dead by Daylight. Oh, dollars. Yeah, I have Dead by Daylight on my ignored list. <laughs> yeah, well, it's twenty dollars. And Alex is purchasing it and sending it to no, you. No, it's on the wish list. It's on the wish list. It's on the wish. All right, we got more news. Yep, yep, we do. Director, composer, and producer of Near. That's a game. Are working together on a new secret project. I bet it isn't. A, I bet it isn't Near. <laughs> it's probably Near. It's, it's probably it's, it's probably, probably near. near. <laughs> it's probably another near. I mean, come on. It's it's probably near. I have no problem it's with times. that. Yeah, I could play another. Tell more near stories game. from near. That universe is crazy. It's a, it's a little wild. Redo Dragon Guard two. Please don't. I, Please yeah, don't. why? Please don't make me play Dragon Guard again. They're gonna. <laughs> I'm going to see if I still have a copy of Drakengard 1. I might. All right. Last piece of real news. Yep. Just yep. double checking. Developers <laughs> of Dead Cells and Prince of Persia roguelike threatening to burn their project down if Silk's, Silk Song shadow drops when their game does. I mean. This is just a funny good story. Yeah, it is. That's, yeah, I, I could see why they would be a little infuriated about that. Do you think that Silk Song would shadow drop? No. Uh, I could, I don't know, I could see maybe. Dude, but th what I was going to say is that what happened was is that they're, they were going to do, um, they were going to release like information in early access regarding their game and all of a sudden Hades 2 dropped. And that was like kind of the joke. They're like, well, <laughs> Silk Song comes out, done, done with all of it. <laughs> Burn it all down. <laughs> Which is very funny to me. It's kind of funny. I just Burn feel down, bad. Tesh's. Make me feel bad. All right. Alex's rumor mill is spewing out stuff this week. What do you, you, what you got? Who are you going to give us? Uh, there is word that uh, outside of Resident Evil 9. That's a game. 9? Nine. Nine. Yep. Being open world, uh, that now news is that Resident Evil One remake is in the works at Capcom. What is it gonna take 
for you to play Resident Evil 1 again? This. This exact thing. <laughs> this thing would make me play it. Would it? Yeah, I liked one. I still gotta go back and play two remake. so... Yeah. You never played two remake. Oh, wait, wait, did we start yeah. playing it together? Yes. We started playing two and three, and then you went without me. Yeah. Yeah. I have no regrets. You? I don't either. I'm not mad at you for it. I'm saying is that I really like these games, and I like one. One was the one that I've beaten the most. I've beaten one, two, and three in the PlayStation days. In in the days. You know what you should play? Seven and eight. Yep. In VR. No. Oh, no. No, I, I would so not sick. even make not, him do I'm it in VR. That. that got me real sick, man. I want. I, I would play it. I'm not afraid of it. Those games are fun. So. Oh, he'd be afraid of it. Oh yes, no, no. Six or seven would freak me the f out. But that's okay. That's okay. That that's like an expectation for me. Mm-hmm. So, that's fine. And. Oh, other news, Alec. This one's Alec. Give me this one. <laughs> yeah. So it looks there's been some uh, rumors going on based off of website scraping and database scraping that there's going to be native PS2 emulation on the PS5 for selling of digital games from the old PS2 era that are going to be upscaled and have bonus features such as quick saves and everything built into it. Quick saves? That's good. Yep. Yeah. That's just cheating with more uh, steps. steps. Is it more steps? Mm-hmm. It okay. might be less steps. Yeah. No, it's not. Know, it's, it's absolutely was, not. Game Shark was a lot of steps, Getty. Yeah, it was. <laughs> Step one: <laughs> insert Game Shark. Step two: select game cartridge. Connect. <laughs> Look up the book for all the codes. Oh yeah, I oh, forgot. Yeah. Yeah. Game Shark wasn't easy. You busted your buns to cheat. But think of all the good stuff that you got out of those cheats. We bun busting bun busting all day does busting make you feel good always alec you agree oh absolutely busting makes me feel good <laughs> do, 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 do. you know what makes me feel good freebies 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 for free there's a lot of them getting. bees this week so many freebies are you ready to do this I am. Are you prepared? Yeah, I added another one halfway through this. What? You're going to have to tell me what that is, because if you didn't add it to this list, I'm not going to make uh, a fool out of myself. Where is it? Is it? Did I add it? I have no idea. Yes. I don't I don't think you yeah, did. But I'm ready. Yeah, I did. I did. I did. First Go. one up. Screenplay. The oh, CCG CC. on Steam. Screenplay is an exciting digital collectible card game set in an imaginative movie-making universe. Players use characters and tropes from different film genres to create their movies, using strategy and intuition to defeat their opponents. Uh, their, their opponent directors. In fact, you can even win without attacking. Ooh, getting this oh, looks that like sounds Magic like the strategy. Gathering. This looks like Magic: The Gathering. I do like strategy. Mm, you do like Magic: The Gathering as well. Can't prove that. mm Hmm. Next up, Capybara, the story of Sisyphus. This is this is a very a goat simulator style game where you are a goat with a chain with a a rock or bear. A, a you're a capybara. To? Yeah, you're a capybara, and it's goat simulator where you're just like rolling the <laughs> the stagnant JPEG of a of a capybara. This looks this looks hilarious. It's already in my. It's already installed. It's installed. It's happening. It's, it's installed. It excited. might be happening tonight. Yeah. Next up, Endless Legend on Steam. Uh, okay. Uh, 4X turn-based fantasy strategy game by the creators of Endless Space and Endless Dungeon of the Endless Trademark. Control every aspect of your civilization as you struggle to save your homeworld. Aruga. Aruga? <laughs> Aruga. Create your own legend. It's a 4X game. This looks cool. If you like uh, in-depth 4X style 
uh, strategy fighting, like fantasy fighting, this is the game for you. This is only free for the next week. Is it? Yes. Thank you, Alec, for correcting So we should all no get it now. No one asked you. Asked who? Me? I don't know, I don't know what we're doing. Good. I'm going to get it anyway. Gonna. Yeah, I'm gonna. This next one just sounds delicious. It is called 100% orange juice. <laughs> uh, Don't like that laugh. Multiplayer board game populate, uh, populated uh, the all star cast of anime waifus. Characters from Flying Red Barrel, QP, Shooting, Soguri, and Sora come together with all new characters to duke it out with dice. It's a board game. It's a fun board game. Is it? Yep, yeah, with anime waifus. Are you trying to trigger somebody? Uh, you specifically. Oh, okay. If it's just me, then we're good. We're all good here. Yep. Next up. Machinica Museum. Uh, let's see. Machin- uh, here we go. Welcome to the museum. Machin- Machinica Museum is a mysterious game where you discover beautiful and mysterious machines of extraterrestrial origins. Uh, 3D puzzle game. Uh, so this reminds me a lot of Doors. You like Doors? I like Doors. So we should play this one. Okay. Cool. I will type it in here. Machinica with a K in it. Where's the K? Uh, M-A-C-H-I-N-I-K. <laughs> All right, everybody, everybody heard that, so... Add to account. Nailed it. Last one on Steam. Everything has been on Steam so far. Root Connection. Uh, this is from the developer who created Lens Gloss. Uh, found this last minute. Uh, this is a 2D platformer. Uh, you are a, a tube root. Okay. A radish of sorts. Digging deep into the root of uh, uh, man, a man struggling with psychotic depression uh, as a as a as a radish. Two D puzzle platforming with a little bit of three D in there. Um, you're puzzling your way through the darkness of alcoholism and the fear of losing loved ones. This is a family hit. Get in there with with your kids. <sighs> Hello, darkness, my old friend. <laughs> But the, the hallucinations of a man struggling with psychotic depression. Yep. And con- connect root root connect this man's life back together. When you All were right. talking about Doris, did you mean Doris Paradox? Yes. Okay. The, not, it was originally on the phone. It was called Doors. Not those doors. The other doors. The other doors. Yep. Yeah. Doris Paradox is a compilation of all the Doors games that were on, originally on the phone. So many doors. What's next, Kenny? Do you want to Last about one. The next one. Over on the Epic Game Store, Dragon Age Inquisition. Will there ever be a, another Dragon Age? I don't know, but probably just go pick up this one for free. Smoke on the streets. The other one's doing pretty well right now. It's still in development. That's what they say. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. We made it through the news. Let's uh, regroup quickly and then take down the backlog. BRB. to wear oh no oh no oh no who did this guys we're back who did this back with the backlog blog where we play games well alex plays some free games i did and they were so free that he's gonna share them with you oh uh, okay oh, i mean all right so we did Duranko wanko right we did that was the dog one. Yep. So there was two more, uh, Boomer Road and Not A Lot. 
um, Boomer Road is a uh, very cool third-person kind of action-adventure game. The core mechanic, and I kind of see why Bandai Namco kind of shot these out pretty unceremoniously, and that's because I feel like these are testing testing ground games. Mm-hmm. So Duranko Ronko, it's like, okay, let's see how we can do particle effects and splatter technology with a dog that shakes his mud everywhere. Right? Yeah. And that makes sense. Boomer Road, the mechanic is you throw your boomerang in a in a like a trajectory, so like an a upward arc or a downward arc or however you throw your boomerang, and it creates a rail that you then grind across. Okay. And so it's very cool about like pathfinding. I'm gonna try to like, oh, there's an obstacle, I'm gonna throw my boomerang kind of curved around and then grind up it and then jump in the air freeze kind of slow down time and throw my boomerang again to make another rail that i will then just instantly grind across and that's kind of the puzzles that they give you you're on this mystical floating island where like just whole giant holes fall like like the ground just falls out from underneath you and the only thing you can get across is using your boomerang this sounds way crazier than i remember it being I mean, I don't think it's that crazy. I think it's more just the fact that you're just finding these really... It's a very satisfying traversal mechanic. It feels good to whip your boomerang, and then your character kind of magnetically just suctioning to the rail and just moving. And if you curve it upward, it kind of pops you up real nice, gives you a little bit of momentum, and then whip your boomerang again. And you have a gauge, so you can't just kind of keep whipping it forever. But they also give you like little rings in the air that if you go through, it just refills your boomerang juice. All boomerang that... juice. I heard I'm, boomerang I'm sipping juice. On, I'm, si- I'm currently sipping on boomerang juice. And uh, Alex talking about you can't just whip it a bunch. No, you can't whip the nay-nay all the time. You gotta take a break. I'm not engaging. <laughs> no, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care so, if you whip or you nay nay. You got to tell us more okay, about Boomer. Boomer Road. All right. Okay, Boomer. Uh, yeah. So it's it's a pretty. Giddy <laughs> doesn't like that. He didn't like being called a Boomer at all. He I am. Me, like, no. I am no. at the point in my life where you can call me whatever you want. I just don't uh, think that. C- Getty, are you currently wearing a cardigan? <laughs> <laughs> Audio podcast, Getty. Why uh, is it an audio? This <laughs> isn't an audio podcast. We're on Twitch. <laughs> oh, we're on Twitch, twitch.tv slash superdigiradio. I still got to reach out. I I have reached out to that guy so many times from Jet Set Radio trying to get him to say our podcast name. And? He continues to ignore my texts, my DMs. I'll get there one day. <laughs> my, my fan letters. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, anyway, Boomer Road's very quick. It's very fast-paced. It's very puzzle-heavy. You knock out some of these puzzles. Uh, the game's pretty short. It's just a fun... Like, I, I was saying, Bandai Namco put these out, it seems like, just to test the grounds for what they can do mechanically, and maybe that'll be used in another full-fledged game. But right now, that's what Boomer Road is. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. And okay. not a lot? Not a lot. You are a... You're a robot. Ooh. One of the many robots. Let me, hold on, I'm going to pull this up, because I'm like, oh, wait... What does your character look like? He looks like a little guy. There you go. Not a lot. Uh, you're a little orb with a little face. Just a little, like, a little cute little face. You roll around, and then you can uh, charge and like, essentially shove your little orb head into, the, into bits and pieces of these other robots, thus controlling them. And you use them to solve puzzles. Move around. Um, you'll find like a spider bot. And you charge up and shoot yourself into the spider bot, and now you are like can walk on walls and ceilings. Um, and then you will get one that's a, like a helicopter, and you have to like connect to him, and you will fly around. Or little guys that will walk around, but they can like walk through electric ground. So you have to find the appropriate robot and take control of it, hack it, if you will. The hacksaws. And Were then- you able to hack it, Alex? It was. Uh, it's fun. Uh, the The cool thing is that they that the enemies they they uh, there is like a uh, you know a vision cone, and if they see you, they try to kill you. 
So you Absolutely. have to kind of sneak around to then hack, and the hack isn't instantaneous. It's a charge. So you have to, like, kind of sneak up and then like and if like, i've done it where i'm like there here's the vision code and they're like oh they're gonna attack me hopefully i will hack them before they kill me kind of you know it's a risk reward uh and then you use them to kind of walk around and solve the puzzles hit the switches to move on to the next level all right i really like it i really thought it was cute at the end you get you know you you get into a uh, a spaceship robot and you hack that and then you escape and it's pretty fun I like it. You get a little personality guy. Your guy's real cute. He's got little eyes, and he's just an orb that rolls around. But if you sit like long enough, he flips himself right side, so you can so his eyes are like up and down. Yeah, it's it's cute. So those were the other two free games. Yep, not a lot in Boomer Road. I will come back at you with Capybara: The Story of Sisyphus in another episode. Okay. <laughs> Possibly Minching. Michinica Museum. <laughs> or Root Connection. You're Root. saying these real weird. I don't think that... Eh, never mind. All right. We're going <laughs> to... I'm throwing a little accent into them. Yeah. Yep. Yep. yep, yep. So uh, I think that we're going to move on over to our one last thing. And tonight's one last thing is brought to you by... Not Joel. Definitely not Joel. He's not here. He nope. didn't bring you anything this week. Yeah, I nope, said it. He's he brought nothing to the table. No. I was all like, hey, man, what do you got this week? He's like, nothing. nothing. I can't be here. He wrote like, the right. episode, not here in all caps. Yep. So let's let Joel go first for one last thing. Oh, wait, he can't. <laughs> I'm going to sip this boomer juice here. <laughs> See, it's a boomer juice because he's a boomer. I get it. That's not, that's not correct. <laughs> <laughs> mm. I guess it's my one last thing, so I'll one last thing it up. Hey guys, I uh, made it to Cosmo Canyon in Final Fantasy VII. Um, man, that game is crazy now. It It is still Final Fantasy VII, but it just keeps getting wilder and wilder, and I'm really scared. I'm really scared for whatever terrifying thing I see next. It wasn't bad enough having to watch Red ride a chocobo. That's my oh. And then I sent you guys him, uh, like, dancing in the yep. Shinra outfit. <laughs> I, I get you the sent me a close-up of Sid, like, smoking a cigarette, like, in my, like, in my, my oh, yeah. PlayStation. <laughs> like, my play, I'm like, I haven't played PlayStation in a while, no and I context. log on, and it's like, there's a message from Getty, and it's just a, like, close-up of Sid's face with a cigarette in his mouth. I'm like, yeah. what are you trying to tell me? Nothing. <laughs> it happened. <laughs> I finally ran into Sid, and I was like, oh, I'll just send this to Alex. No context. It was perfect. I love it's a it. close-up, too. All right, Alex, what do you got? Uh, I just want to say that I'm just so excited for Grandpa High on Retro. <laughs> I can't tell you how much I, was, I saw this, and I was like, well, this seems like my game. This seems like the game that's meant for me. Like yeah. A lot of these dumb retro games that don't make any, any lick of sense. Let me tell you. When you start, when you play games like uh, uh, the Not Your Average Bear, I'm into the weird man. Boy, so let me tell. I could write an essay about what adios means to me in the in the being close to forty. Let's do that. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about. Let's get Ooh. weird with it. Boomers playing games. Is that what it is? I'm not a boomer. No, I'm you're a, a millennial. Damn millennial. <laughs> He's a millennium. <laughs> uh, millennial. <laughs> It's worse than a millennial. Alec. Well, I've officially watched um, as many videos as I can stomach on how to use the insect glaive in Monster Hunter, so I'm hoping to get some time in on that this week. Did you watch the, did you watch the Arrakis one? That's the best yeah. one. Okay. Yeah, that'll get you there. Now if I can just remember how to play when I actually go to play. No. Nope. Yeah, I mean, you need to get a couple of hours in on your own and then go back to the video and be like, oh, that's what they meant. Because it really does. Getty, in Monster Hunter, the animations matter. It's Yes, it's, they do. There's a, there's a sword and shield that will turn into an axe. They will combine them. He'll put the shield on the end of the sword and it becomes an axe. Mm -hmm. But the transformation... 
when he does it, he pulls the shield forward first, and that counts as a block. So you, if if you're mid transformation, it could still block hits. Like the animation priorities matter, and it's like that's that's real. That's real good, man. It's real dumb, but it's also real good because all you're doing is just like going into some like a monster's natural habitat, and being like, "Hey, you gotta die," so I could put your your skin on my I, shoulders. I've already told you that I don't agree with the whole premise <laughs> for Monster Hunter. No one does. Like, like everybody, I've been playing. I've I've been playing since the first one. Hey, I'm, you want to go kill these monsters? I'm sure, six what did they games do? deep, and the ways that they try to say, "Hey, those monsters are evil," and it's like, "Are they?" What did they do to us? Oh, I don't know. We're just invading their land, and we're going to kill and them. Rise, all. Like, they're like, I don't know. They're stampeding. They're always stampeding in our towns, and I'm like, maybe we shouldn't be here. I don't yeah, know. Seems... World kind of sets them up as if you're doing like population control. Yeah, like it, it varies per game per game. Like sometimes, like again, Rise, it's like a mystical event where they're rampaging and we need to figure it out. And I'm like, I don't know if we need to. So, hey guys, maybe so, we just like not live here. How's, how's yeah. that sound? Just leave them alone. Oh, but the worst, the worst part but, is that then for some reason I don't know. Since I play Monster Hunter now, I'm like, oh yeah. Whenever they phase, everybody has wings. Where did they oh. get wings? <laughs> Everything no. can fly. See, that's not even the worst part for me. The worst part is that, like, in in the actual game, Getty, after you defeat them, if you you could either trap them or kill them. Yeah. When you kill them, you then spend time carving up their body, and it's an animation. You have yeah. to hit X to carve. Yep. And then and you can use that to like, make your gear. Uh, uh, and you hear squelching. You hear the squelching. That's not the first it's, time we heard it tonight, so. No, it's it, it's it's a real weird game, but I just, I've been playing it for so long. Well, let's get Alec into it so that he can finally yeah, share Alec, you his experience. Yeah, gotta get your carves in, man. Get extra carves. Get extra carves? carves? Get. Yeah. If you chop off a tail, man, stop whatever you're doing and get those carves in. <laughs> you need that tail. You need that tail. Carve on the tail. All day. All right. Let's uh, close things up here. That'll be it for this week's episode of Super GG Radio. Before we go, you can find us on X, formerly Twitter, at Super GG Radio and twitch.tv slash Super GG Radio, where Thursdays, much like tonight, you can come, sit, watch us make clowns out of ourselves, because it's our live podcast. If you're just going to listen to us, uh, that, that's fine, too. Yeah. Uh, Give but, us a five star on iTunes, Spotify, whatever you are listening on. Give us them five stars. If you don't give Alex five stars, he can't go home. I can't. I can't go home. Like you guys all leave, and I'm still in this channel, being like, hello. Yep. Hello. He's gonna get us banned from the internet. Mm-hmm. That's how this works. <laughs> I already talked to Mary Kish about our, our show and saying, hey, we really need to get this off off the air. It's a real problem. And she said, yeah, I, I, I am aware. Oh, yeah. oh that's sure. good. She's, she's been on the show. She's aware. <laughs> she's, she knows. All right. <laughs> Wednesdays, Alex is still Monster Hunter? Yeah, it's just, you know, it's just a game. I log on, I find randos, and I, and I, I murder helpless folks that are Yeah. You did this. Uh, Joel is still on hiatus. He is in a deep review hole. Like he is, he is like three games into a review hole. So he will be out for a little bit. <laughs> yeah, uh, I do think that we need to get more on these uh, multiplayer madness streams that I wanted to get set up. Let's, let's make some stuff happen. You can, you can sure try. <laughs> I don't know if it'll happen though. All right. That's that's what we got for streaming. Check it out. If you want to check out our YouTube, we got all kinds of crazy stuff on there too. I think yeah, Joel you... threw up a video of him playing Nine Years of Shadow. He like ruined the entire ending and I'll never play that game again. Yeah. Oh that's not spoiler. True. That's not true. It is I was I'm very confused on how I feel about that game and then watching the final boss I was like, man, now I just really want to play this game. So <laughs> he kinda sold me on it. I think there's still a humble bundle for it. You know, 
It didn't look that difficult. It was really telegraphing a lot of the moves. So. It really was, but for me, I'm like, I don't know if I love the art style, but then watching it in motion, it felt like it looked like it, it, it looked like it, it looked like it moved. Really well. So yeah. I was like, oh, okay, I think that I can be on board with this. Maybe. Give it a shot. Or, you know, take a break. Take a nap. <clears throat> Either way, we'll still be here. We'll still be here. And if you'd like to reach us with questions or input, our email address is mail at superggradio.com and provide us a review on iTunes or the podcast app of your choice. Thanks for listening and good game, Alec. Good game, Getty. Good game, Alex. I'm going to start making a timer on our website that's just the countdown to gory, cuddly carnage. Do it.